Recording in progress. Um, it being on or about 6.30, I want to bring this uh, meeting of the Eastern Conservation Commission to order May 23rd, 2022. Please yes. note, in accordance with certain COVID-19 measures adopted during state of emergency as amended by Governor Baker on February 12th, 2020, this 2022, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board and commission members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quotum. This meeting is being uh, recorded and available for broadcast at a later date, uh, audio and video. Um, in order to establish quorum, um, if we could just take a roll call. Um, Um, that'd be great. So, um, uh, call fells present. Benson present. Present. Spady present. Great. Uh, so, um, Nate isn't going to make it tonight. So it's just the four of us. So, um, one thing to just note here, um, I know that, um, Associate members uh, Jonathan Chase and Stefan Catino are here. Um, we um, had expected to talk about reappointments. I know I had spoken to a couple of you uh, offline. We're not actually going to do reappointments tonight. We'll actually do them um, in July. Um, but um, I'm happy to um, um, talk about anything. We're actually going to talk about uh, land management and trails a little bit later on in the in the meeting, so there was some confusion about what uh, uh, what was going to happen tonight. So, just want to make sure that uh, you guys are clear on what that is. Okay. Um, first up is uh, 91 Union Street. We did get a request from the applicant to uh, continue this to June 6. So we're not going to discuss this tonight. We're going to just continue. Uh, so. Uh, make a motion to continue 91 Union Street to June 6th. Carol, second. Uh, call fells, Carol, second. Roll call vote. Call fells, aye. Benson, aye. Carol, aye. Spady, aye. Um, next up is uh, 6 Berwick Road. So certificate of compliance. Um, do we have anybody here for this? It doesn't look like it. That would be that would be great. <laughs> um, so when I did the inspection on May 11th, uh, the grass was in. It needed a little bit more time to grow. I'm sure by you know, two weeks later, um, it's looking appropriate. The um, soil, the um, leaves that were in the wetlands have all been removed, and the no disturbance zone signs are in place. So they're ready for a full certificate of compliance. Any questions from the commission? Any public comment, Six Berwick Road? Uh, seeing none, um, make a motion to issue, issue a certificate of compliance for Six Berwick Road. Speedy second. Roll call vote, call fells aye. Benson, aye. Arrow I, ADI. <clears throat> okay, uh, Twin Brooks Drive. Uh, actually, the uh, applicant um, in the interim here has actually withdrawn this request, uh, and so we can just uh, we're going to move on. So this that, that application was withdrawn on Twin Brooks Drive. Um, you will see a, a theme here: um, 55 Pond Street, Lot One, uh, and 50, 59 Pond Street, Lot Two. This was continued from a, a hearing we had in um, a couple months ago, and then we had a town meeting where we actually uh, allocated uh, funds to purchase uh, this property. So, um, so this is no longer needed. The applicant has withdrawn the request for extension. So that worked well. <laughs> Amazingly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so now we are already to board discussion. Six thirty-five. Wow! <laughs> Blazing speed. Um, first up is so uh, on Monday, uh, on Monday night, last Monday night, um, 
the uh, we had a uh, article 13 was a bylaw change where we added uh, some potential uh, exemptions to the to the bylaw um, through uh, a, an amendment of the bylaws so uh, there was actually we proposed we proposed a, a um, um, <coughs> an article and then there was a, a citizen that proposed a minor modification to the article to make it a little bit um, uh, clearer the citation we were looking to include, which was uh, 310 CMR 1002. Um, and so uh, Jennifer was actually there and uh, did a great job of uh, saying the CONCOM uh, had no problem with uh, such a, an amendment. So, uh, so it was amended. Um, at the time, we've been this, this, these regulation changes we had considered probably about six months, maybe even more ago, maybe even October. Um, but we realized at the time that we couldn't make these changes because the bylaw had prevented us from doing so. So that's why we had to wait for town meeting. So now we have um, these regulation changes in front of us, most of which I think we've seen most of it. Um, there's probably a little cleanup that we need to do on them um, to make sure that um, um, that we cover everything that we want to do, as well as make sure that we're not undoing something. Uh, unintentionally. I think there's some language in one of the things about the agricultural that we need to clean up just a little bit to make sure that we're not um, creating a, a problem here for us that we didn't, was unintended. So you want me to put that up? Yeah, that'd be great. The uh, proposed one or the existing? Um, do you have the, do you have the, the track changes one or? I have the proposed um, with it's in track changes. So there's one little note here that we have to fix this first one. Yeah. Um, the track changes version of the original is so full of red lines that it's yeah. really difficult to read anything. So, so I can put up either one. Um, so why don't we, um, why don't you put up the why don't you put up the original one first and then we can talk about you know just in general the things we want to change here what we have to change nope that's not it Can you see that? Or are you still looking at my thing? Okay. Voice. That's okay. It happens sometimes where I have to shut it off and turn it back on. Okay. How about now? Yep. Okay. So, so if, we go down, if we go down to 5032, right? So, so the part we need to change here is... Um, exemptions. Exemptions, right. So... Um, so we need to change that um, the exemptions that uh, under this bylaw shall include exemptions consistent with the Wetlands Protection Act uh, in reference that the, the section that was added in the, the bylaw change on Monday. So that would be 310 CMR 10.2. And then remove the part that says and only the, the um, and those exemptions shall not apply. So the other thing that <clears throat> we have to clean up here is this, um, and I think what happened was, if you look in, in B1, A, B, and uh, C, this is all about agriculture. And so um, I think that the intention here was just to clean this up because if you actually look at it, uh, B1 and B2 are very repetitive of what they say. Um, and so we were just trying to clean that up a little bit and we got a little bit carried away. And I think we, we uh, excluded a line that we wanted to keep. Um, so, um, agricultural use um, for land that's already in agricultural use, uh, maintenance and improvement is, is allowed uh, without a permit. It's a, a standard sort of thing in both our bylaw and in the state. So, um, but um, the part that we want to keep in is this B1B that says expansion of agricultural activities into lands not previously in agricultural use requires a permit. 
So that, that's something we want to keep in still, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there was, I don't, we never had any discussion about removing that as an exemption because I think that um, I've had, we've actually had one case in the last five years that this actually came up um, where there was a request to, to do some work in land that wasn't in agricultural use. So, um, so we, I think we want to keep that, that part in. Um, but, and then I'm not even quite sure we even um, need to change them. That I think we can just keep B altogether. Um, and so I think that, uh, I think B and C are probably um, pretty clear to, to, to what we want to keep in here. And then we just want to make the changes we talked about last time, which had to do with uh, um, if you bring up the other one now, Jennifer, it might make more sense. So here's one. Why are we saying some things need permits? Why, why do we need this section at all? And if it's not an exemption, you already need a permit. So I'm um, just wondering why we. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a belt and suspender approach. You know, and I, I agree that, that that's, um, I, th I think it's for a clarity's sake um, from that standpoint. Okay. Just grabbing my keyboard here. So, and the only other thing is up in uh, the first paragraph, just change it to under CMR three ten, uh, CMR ten o two and take off the two and three, right? Because that, just have it match what the bylaw says, the amended bylaw. Right. Three is the part about utilities, um, but you already have utilities in here. So it's okay if that part is removed. So we removed utilities from from this version. I think because we anticipated the having three. Do we have to put it back in? I'm not totally understanding that question, Rory. So it, it, in the it's hard because I if I can bring it up, I'll, I'll, I'll let me bring up my my copy of this maybe. You want me to stop sharing so you can share? Just give me one sec. I mean, my thought is there's no need to, you know, put the same thing in that's already in Wetland Protection Act. Reference Wetland Protection Act, you don't need to write it all out all over again. Just put what's the difference. Does any engineer, wetland consultant, they don't want to read 300 pages of text that's half the same as Wetland Protection Act. They want to know, just tell me what the difference is. What's what's the difference? <laughs> yeah, I, I, so if there's a way to cut out what we don't really need because we've already referenced Wetland Protection Act, then um, it makes it a little bit cleaner and easier to read and a little shorter, frankly. So, so my question is under 10.02.3, is that the public utilities part? Yes. So the, the bylaw, so do we allow that under our, our current bylaw? You do. Okay. I mean, as long as we allow it under the current bylaw, I don't have an issue with it, so. Well, Bro, your question was, do we have to leave three in for, for some reason? Well, we only changed, I think that it, what got changed in the bylaw was 10.022. Yeah. Correct. 
And so my, my question was, since we didn't include 10023 in the Do, do we need this explicitly stated here or not? I, I think you can take it out. Yeah. Because this sentence says, shall include exemptions consistent with Wetland Protection Act, which lists agriculture, emergencies, and utilities, and the regulations under 10.02, which is that list of okay. minor projects. So yeah. I think we're okay there. I'm I'm good with that. Okay. Um, and then under two, we're simply noting um, that these 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 items require um, pre-construction review by the agent, right? Yeah. Or if it's in the if it's in the buffer zone, um. Or the riverfront area, because those are both exemptions under Wetland Protection Act if it's more than 50 feet away from the wetland. Right. Uh, and we're just saying we just want a pre construction review of these um, other projects. Might have a site inspection, might have some cleanup work for somebody to do. You might need to post some markers up there, but whatever it is, it can be done um, administratively. Right. So I think that from this standpoint, um, just to sort of for the for edification here, just installation of fencing, providing it does not constitute a barrier to wildlife or flow of water, flood waters. Vista pruning proposal prepared by a licensed arborist or forester has a tree removal identified by a licensed arborist or the removal of up to three trees provided an equal number of native species or trees or shrubs are planted or replanted. Conversion of lawn to accessory uses such as repair, replacement, or construction of decks or patios under 300 square feet, and installation of above ground pools located greater than 50 feet from bank vegetated wetland and land subject to flooding and or located greater than 100 feet from a vernal pool. And con construction and replacement of sheds under 200 square feet provided is located further from the wetland resource than existing conditions. So I think that just our intention here is that these aren't automatically approved. These still require administrative approval and will require a site visit um, by, the, by the commission or a representative. So um, I think that that's one thing I wanna stress here is that we are not giving carte blanche to these things that they need to be uh, run by the commission still, but they won't require a hearing if they meet all the guidelines. There may be times where the agent determines that this is a case where um, it, it needs to come before the commission. Um, so two other exemptions here, installation of an in-ground pool shall require a permit for work. It's just a, one of these belt and suspenders things and the removal of trash, rubbish, junk, compost or other items dumped, um, placed or stockpiled within a wetland resource may be required prior to receiving an administrative approval. So, so I think that, anybody have any questions on the commission want to discuss it further before we take it to public comment? I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm just gonna come up to the top here and capitalize the permit for work because that is what in the definition section and it should be capitalized. Okay. Conservation commission capitalized too, or no? Um, normally only if it is saying the Easton Conservation Commission, if it's just Conservation Commission, it's not usually, but I'm going to leave it the way it is because I'm sure the whole rest of the document has it capitalized. Yeah, I mean, the original, the original document has it capitalized where you were replacing that back in. Yeah, I would just leave it that way and hope we get the grant and are able to get some technical assistance to revise the whole thing so it's easier to understand and follow. You know, believe me, I, 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 some of your feedback tonight is something we've been talking about for quite some time. There's a lot of repetitive, if, if you read these from front to back as many times as, as some of us have, you would notice how repetitive it is. And so, um, and stating things that are either included in another section or, included in some other citation. So I agree with you. So, 
Um, any public comment on um, proposed regulation change to 5032B? You want to be recognized, just raise your hand or put a comment in. Okay, Jonathan Chase wants to be recognized. Hey, Jonathan, you can uh, turn on your video and your audio and then introduce yourself for the record. Hi there. Hi there. How are you? Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little rusty from last time. So That's okay. So just to identify yourself for the record and give us your address to Jonathan. Hi, uh, Jonathan Chase, 79 Prospect Street, Southeastern. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, you know, a question I had, I was, I'm a little confused as to whether or not you were uh, limited projects in this change. That's not proposed. Okay. That was my my confusion. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Any uh, any further comments from the public on uh, reg change for five zero three two three two B? Okay. Uh, so seeing none. Um, you want me to stop sharing now? Yes, thanks. Just want to demote uh, Jonathan. Okay, so um, are we uh, ready to make a, a motion here and, and go with the proposed language as we've settled on tonight? Okay, so uh, I make a motion to uh, modify section 5032B of the Easton uh, um, regulations uh, as, uh, as uh, I'm just trying to figure out the final, I don't wanna to have to read the whole part of it, so. <laughs> um, as edited. <laughs> as, as, as edited this evening. Um, during the meeting. Maybe a second. Uh, roll call vote, Kalfels, aye. Benson, aye. Carol, aye. Spady, aye. Okay, uh, very good. Thank you all. Long time to get there, but we did. Thank you for uh, all the feedback we got from uh, the public to be quite honest, because there was some other feedback we received prior to this. So I do appreciate it all. And, uh, and, and the interest the public has, uh, has, has displayed in this. So I do appreciate it. Um, the next up on the agenda is Flyway Pond Land Management and Trails. So um, I'm gonna promote Chris up here. Do we wanna promote Chris and then we can talk about it? There you are. You're on mute still though, Chris. So Chris uh, Chris Patrick is associate member of the Conservation Commission, longtime uh, associate member, is also was a, uh, a member of the commission for quite a while as well, and prior to my joining the, the commission. So um, Chris, um, I, I think that, um, I know we wanted to have a discussion tonight um, and talk about uh, some of the trail uh, um, plans as well as sort of a land management um, a discussion in general as, as uh, Jennifer and the rest of the commission, we try and um, sort of steer our way through all of uh, 
uh, all of what we need to do, not just uh, the one uh, one trail we're, we're thinking about tonight. So, sure. Um, well, first, let me just introduce myself um, to the members that don't maybe don't know me, and then uh, the public at large. Um, I've uh, my name is Chris Patrick. I've been with the Conservation Commission since I think 2010. Um, I was originally a full member, um, as you are. Uh, on the board here. Um, and during my tenure, um, there was a lot of pressure during those years to, um, for the town as it was going through its planning, um, uh, to start figuring out what it would do with its open space. Um, much of which didn't really have any sort of formal um, trail work. Uh, excuse me, trail plans and, and trail areas on it. Um, some of them were social, some of them were motorized use. Uh, it, was, it was a mishmash. Um, and I raised my hand in 2013, I wanna say, um, to suggest to the board that we start uh, having open positions for associate commissioners and they would be specifically charted with um, volunteerism and um, assisting with um, making our open spaces um, better places for all of us to enjoy. Um, and that went well uh, because I've been doing it since that time. Um, and since that time, um, two other members who you guys probably know well, um, uh, Stefan Caldino and John Chase, Jonathan Chase have also become associate Conservation Commission members. And um, all three of us have been actively behind the scenes working with Jen and previously with a Andrea um, and then previously with Stephanie um, working to promote um, and take care of our open space. Um, a lot of it is uh, managing lately, at least the last few years has been managing a lot of um, Eagle Scout projects that have come to both Jonathan and myself. Um, some which are involving trails, some which are involving other things like butterfly gardens or uh, just certain things that will improve um, our open space. Um, and so throughout that time, we've, we've, we've done quite a bit. Um, uh, for those of you that explore the trails throughout our town, um, in 2013, I was able to get the town of an RTP grant for Clifford Grant. It was the first major project that we did for $17,000. We built out that trail system in which it is now, you know, very heavily used. Um, and I won't go on for all the other trail projects that I've done because um, you can go and explore those on the map and sort of see all the other things. There's a huge history of um, trail work that we've done all throughout town. The most recent project uh, projects that have been done under my watch, um, starting in 2018, and what we're here to talk about tonight is Flyaway Pond. Um, and then we can talk about man uh, trail management and land management. But um, in 2018, um, a scout from Troop 42, um, the other troop in town, I'm, I'm, I'm aligned with Troop 193, but a scout from that troop approached me and said, I'd like to do a trail project. And I've noticed that Flyaway Pond management area really doesn't have very much on you know, the north end of the, the property. And so Jonathan Chase and I and him, we started transecting that property. It took us months to really sort of figure that property out. Um, and he was the first first trail build. It was the one that um, connects Deer Run Road with, with um, Chickadee Lane. Um, and if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna show a little presentation that will help me talk us through this. Um, hopefully you can see my screen here. Yep. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to start my slideshow. I think it's easier just to do it this way. Um, and so let me just bring up this map um, of the flyaway pond management area as it exists today. Um, so the trail that the first trail that was built, um, I don't know if you can see my mouse hovering was this trail here that connects Chickadee Lane with Deer Run Road. Um, that was in 2018 with Max Roads. Um, so if you can picture, there was only trails on the south end of the, 
the parcel at the time. And then this trail that was um, connecting Deer Run Road with Chickadee Lane. Um, and we were able to do the Chickadee Lane connection due to some uh, gracious donations from a land uh, a landowner on that end of the um, the, the the parcel. Um, the Bennetts donated access for us so that the town could enjoy that for generations to come. So that trail was the first one. Um, and in 2000, late 2019, <laughs> Alex's brother approached me and said, "Hey." I got to outdo my brother on an Eagle project. I really would like to do a trail project. And I said, well, if you, you know, I, I always give a list, you know, I, we, amongst the commissioners, we all have kind of ideas floating around. Um, and I always give a list, you know, something that's relatively easy lift, depending on how many months they have and something that's, they could go and really be challenged. And this one was more than a challenge. The second one, this trail that connects Max's original trail with all the way down to the town pool. Um, and so that trail was um, wa was built in basically 2020 during the pandemic um, or the first parts of it. Um, and uh, let's see, I lost my place. Um, and so, and our um, I think have opened up uh, for a lot of um, folks in town um, a really enjoyable place for for people to go hike. Um, it connects neighborhoods. Um, it 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 started to bring about the goals that were a part of Envision Easton, which was our um, our planning that was done in 2014. Um, and I can snap that slide. But basically, and there was a master plan done in 2014 where the goals were to enhance connectivity. Um, and this particular set of trails over in Flyaway basically um, created connections um, for neighborhoods for both biking and hiking. Um, so that's that's the existing trail. Before I go any, go any further and, and talk about a proposed trail that I'd like to, to talk about tonight, are there any questions so far about the Flyaway land management property as it exists today? So, so one of the one of the things that that um, comes up with a lot of these trails, and, and we saw it in maybe one of your sort of cover photos, how much boardwalk is is part of these uh, these trail projects, typically? Well, it if there's if there's a chance to build a trail where we can stay high and dry, then there's none. <laughs> um, we live in Easton here, and so. One of the challenges of building trail here in Easton due to the fact that we have so much flat, low lying um, land with, uh, with wet areas is that in order to build a trail that can be used by and, enjoy, and enjoyed by and remain sustainable um, is to construct boardwalk um, to get the trail users off of the trail surface and not degrade the, the area. And so this particular boardwalk that I have designed and, and used as a standard across town is actually a standard that that a number of trail agencies in Eastern Massachusetts have now grabbed a hold of. Um, they like to the design a lot. We've we've been using this exact design up in the Blue Hills uh, for the DCR um, and a number of other DCR properties for the last ten years. So it's a well accepted design. Um, here in Easton, we don't have to make the trail boardwalks as wide as some of the areas where they get much more heavier use. So for example, the same design, but four feet wide is used up in the Blue Hills. Um, so yeah, that, to answer that question, that's the main reason why to get trail users up and out of the, the wet areas and um, onto the dry areas, so. All right, um, hearing any, no other, other uh, questions, I'm gonna proceed. So the trail that I'd like to propose, I don't have a lot of photos here tonight, but basically for those of you that have explored flyaway um, pond management area, um, I personally think it's one of the most beautiful parcels that we have in Easton. And, if, and just to talk quickly about the history of that parcel, just real quick, um, that parcel was acquired by the town. Um, it's comprised of multiple properties um, 
most of which were acquired in 1996 and 1997. Um, and for those commissioners that don't know, the majority of the property that we have built on trail now um, was acquired in 1997 due to a developer that had um, basically not done um, a wetland review for a significant mm -hmm. bridge project. And we basically ended up making a deal in exchange for his, you know, misguided decisions, shall we say. Um, so it was a good deal for us and it was a great exchange. It allowed us to connect a parcel that we now have access to that would have been blocked by homes. Um, the, the parcels in the back of this property were acquired in 1996 um, through the work of John Grant. And for those of you that don't know John Grant, he was an amazing person for conservation land here in Easton. He helped us acquire more property than I think any other person in the state of Massachusetts for a town. Um, so that's kind of the, the quick and short history about Flyway. It's been acquired and we've only owned it for about 30 years. So um, so let me talk about the, the proposal that I have for an additional trail. And so here is a map with the, the, the new trail. <clears throat> up here on this, uh, there's a loop up here that I've proposed. Um, that's all, for the most part, it's, it's it's all upland. There would not be any boardwalks needed for this upper piece um, unless the commission is deemed it ne being needed. But um, based on my field walks and, and flagging, this trail is flagged right now. Um, so that if flagging, just to get an idea, in order for me to, me to make a proposal like this, I have to go flag the trail. I have to transect the property. I have to figure out where the features are. You'll notice that this trail does some twists and turns. And if you go out there and you were to explore this trail, you would find out this marked trail, you would find out that you'd think that those um, those loops um, have sight lines to th so that you can see other sections of the trail, but it's very um, like almost glacial deposit out there. It's like high little elevation changes. And so um, the sight lines are really good to have this kind of a trail up there. Um, the proposed trail length would get us uh, a connection sh should we so choose in the future to uh, just at the very top of the property um, where there's a cul-de-sac, uh, 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 I believe it's Eagle Rock Road. Um, and I do know a couple of folks that actually hike into the woods, no trail needed, they just hike into the woods to explore the woods from that neighborhood. And I know that they would they would love to have access and be able to hike that, hike and bike that, um, that section loop. So that's the loop. Um, again, um, I've sent this pri previously um, to Jen and um, I don't know if there's any sort of uh, issues with um, its proposed location regarding um, wetland, but um, if, if uh, the commission were to have a discussion tonight, I would like to be able to get, hear whether that's a problem or not as well. Okay. So I'll stop there. I have that. I'll take any questions that anybody has. Mike? Yeah. So I, well, Chris, we previously spoke about this. Um, I know that that first section there coming into flyaway onto the new trail, we talked about how that was uh, for a significant amount, was in kind of deer, deer bedding area. Um, I know we we're kind of thinking about maybe shifting around that or moving around that. So I don't, I, I, mean, I know you can't really show that minute change in the directions now, but yeah, I know I just, just to bring it up again, just to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Little, actually, if you look, it's yeah, funny you mentioned that. that. I, there. Yeah. This bubble here, yeah. uh, when I had my GPS on, I was noticing the same thing and I was trying to find as, and then I realized I had my GPS on, I was trying to find a place that looked like a, a logical spot to, to bring the trail and that exit, huh. that area has, there's a bunch of different opportunities for us to create a, um, an entry point that's, you know, the kind of skirts what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, that whole center area right at the top of the um, the bump here, this whole area here is all um, just like all through here is all high bush blueberry. Um, and it's a mix of other plants, but it does a lot of high bush blueberry. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of like the very top of the hill ish here. And then there's another hill right. over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, the terrain back there is just amazing. Um, the sight lines are incredible. Um, the flora, the fauna, the wildlife, everything. It's just really, it's really an amazing spot. 
Um, uh, to the point of wildlife again, when, what's your time frame when you want to start this? I know um, it was to be proposed and we allowed it. What was, what was your kind of, or your mindset? So if I were to, if I were to get approval to start the trail build, um, I'm flexible. Um, okay. But I can get volunteers to start working on this, um, you know, in the summer season, in the fall season, whenever. I realize yeah. that this particular area um, being adjacent to the Ames Rifle Club and being in a part of town where uh, traditionally um, hunters have been using the land for for many years, um, that maybe a fall season build late fall when shotgun deer and those kind of seasons are in play would not be an optimal time to be up there. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm more so just thinking early season with deer having a lot of fawn. There's there's currently back there now too, I think pretty largely impregnated, you know, pregnant uh, doe and they're going to have fawn soon and they're going to use that high bush blueberry to, you know, leave their fawns and let them chill. And I just don't, we're already impacted this land quite a bit already. We've impacted it now with this new flyaway trail, which is only, only maybe, you know, two-ish years old. Uh, there is a trail across the way, across by the gun club that's, you know, adjacent to this. So there's a lot of traffic uh, and that trail's gained a little popularity as well by mountain bikers. So I just, I want to be careful of the time frames. I don't want to upset, you know, natural being of what's going on out there. We've kind of put a bomb out there with being so disturbed by so many people already in a short amount of time, including hunters, including bikers, including all the people. But this one, I'd like to be a little more mindful of when we're doing it, and, and, you know, and just being respectful like that we're being very pressured. You know, we don't want to so be like a fall build would be good. Uh, sure, maybe even like a, I mean, it's, it would be awful to do it like in August, it'd be super hot, but August is kind of like a better time of that year. You're getting into those, you know, just a little, little later on. But Jen so, might have so right now, you know, we're really only talking about deer right now. And when I, right, look, at, way and more when, than that. When I look at an area um, for any type of trail development or any type of um, future activity, I start with the land management plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we don't have one for this. And the land management plan is more than just how can people use all of the property. It's what type of um, plants do we have? What type of soil do we have? What's the forestry type? What is the wildlife habitat? We have a lot of birds that require deep woods habitat. Um, a, lot of, a lot of our mammals um, would shy away from any human interaction or even, um, you know, animal waste, right? Urine from, from dogs impacts where fox, coyote, um, any of our mammals will go. So just having dog walkers, hikers, bikers, you know, everybody on the property, you do want to try to maintain areas where there are no people. And that comes with the management plan and finding out you know, what's the vegetation type, the soil type, what what are the habitat features in those areas? So, I mean, I, my suggestion is to come up with the management plan first and then look at whether it's appropriate to increase um, the amount of trails on a property. So, so if we, um, I, I just don't recall us, <clears throat> is this, I mean, maybe it's just a sort of a, um, something that we, need to become more aware of as, as we start to build out some of the, the properties. And um, it, I, I don't think we've, we've thought about, I, I haven't heard us discuss the, the wildlife um, aspect of this um, and whether or not, um, and also the, the, the actual um, horticulture as well. So um, I, I don't think we've discussed that very much. We've talked very much about the wetlands and disturbance. Some of these things have, have occurred, but. Um, how how would we approach um, and how long would it take us to sort of make that assessment of a specific area like this where we've got this um, uh, proposed uh, trail? Um, how long would it take us to maybe even, I don't know how much, how much of the flyaway, that whole, that whole undisturbed part of flyaway, do we, do we survey that whole flyaway part before we make this decision? The way that I've seen it done in the past and the way I've done it in the past is you evaluate the entire property first and then you come up with your management goals and the locations where those things are appropriate. So you would look at the entire property as a whole. So um, do we 
have um, is that something we'd have to contract out or is it something we could do amongst ourselves to get um, out there and do it? It certainly that? makes more sense to do that yourself so that you can actually get a feel for the property and you get out there and you see it. Um, yeah. So how long would it take us to do that, do you think? Uh, that I, I couldn't say. It depends on people's availability and... Um, how we can put that together. Um, ideally, you would also get some input from neighbors um, so that it, it has public buy-in on um, whatever the goals of the property are. Right. It always starts with the natural resources. You know, what are the goals of the property? Right. So, I, mean, I, I certainly, I mean, I, I, I want to find a way to balance the, the the recreational aspect of the use of the land with the, the the natural resources aspect of it as well. So, including wildlife and, and habitat and um, in the the other agriculture that's happening out there, not agriculture, but not horticulture that's happening out there. So, I, I think that that's. Um, I mean, I think that's the, the proper approach. So, I, I think you know, putting together for this piece of property before we. You know, probably make the decision with with um, um, Chris and whatever volunteers he has for this is try and put that plan together and, and do some assessment of this to understand already what impacts we're we're making and what potential impacts further um, further trail building will, will have on it. So, do we have an idea of what the traffic count is back there as it exists? I'm just gonna say that, yeah. Is it, you know, I'm 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 back there relatively frequently, and it is rare that I see one other person. It's the five o'clock time frame that gets the it's crazy time. Yeah, I mean the morning. I mean I'm there every morning. You know, it's it's me and Kyle and Don, the Bennett's there are there every morning, and then pretty much it. Um, and then midday, it's, it's a few occasional mountain bikers, but it's usually at the five o'clock <clears throat> window. You get the pass through, like trail runners, the bikers, you know, linking it up from Borderland or Clifford Grant or so on. And then weekends, weekends you'll see more of like a consistent flow. But this is one of the sites. It's, it's like flow. It, it's shocking to me how much activity there isn't back there, just because of how amazing those trails are. <laughs> it's accessibility, I think, just terms of parking and knowing. Well, and two, it's an out and back, and that's a lot. People, you know, they sometimes like a loop. Adding that loop would probably help a little more traffic. Out and backs are tough. You know, who wants to walk one way and walk the exact same thing back the other way? You know. True. Plus, it's a almost six-ish miles-ish if you went to the town and pull all the way up and back. So it's a kind of a hike. So. Yeah, I am. Um, I, as I think about the, the land management use, um, I keep coming back to like, just if we were to able to zoom back on this map and just discover that all this open space all around us um, is currently having trail development done on it as we speak. Um, the town of Stoughton just got a trail grant to do trail expansion in the bird property, um, an RTP grant. Um, the state just co-acquired uh, Rattlesnake Hill where I'm involved with some trail uh, expansion work up, up there. Um, and none of, none of those agencies have, have made any kind of a statement about um, habitat or animals. Um, so it's kind of a surprise to me. I haven't run into this before. Um, That's kind of sad that they're not. <laughs> Um, Don't you think that'd be important that they're you're ruining the front lawn of their home? <laughs> I just think that's amazing. Well, it's interesting that we're talking um, about animals that you like to hunt. So it's I don't know. It's kind of an it's interesting. More state. A, more well, don't turn man. around like that. I mean, you try to try to say I think I murder animals. That you think that's is that the comment you're trying to make? Because that's not really polite. I don't really respect well, that's not why. That's not well, why I hunt look, animals. I care about their like just as much as all any other conservation commissioner on here. I respect them very much. Okay. So don't just don't classify me as like a hunter, like a killer. That's not what I well do. So look we'll roll I, yourself back with that. All right. I don't well, that, that doesn't I, I can Matt can fairly make a statement about <sighs> hunting in a piece of property. Um when when deer has been reported in our town prior to you serving on this commission as being a population problem and um now we're we have to be careful of deer bedding areas. I, I just want to make it clear. Um, we know the, that so we all have a different stake in, in the use of the land. And, and so let me just finish, Rory. 
the, I know, Chris, the goal of the land be, is... Be very careful, Chris. I mean, you've already had one out-of-bound statement, I think, here. So I'm just asking you to be a little bit careful. Fair enough. What? Do you so, think so, I don't... Hang on, just, just one sec. So let's just... And, I, I, and I'm happy to have this conversation um, in a different manner than how it started, okay? First of all, we, we've, we've got a deer study going on right now in town, which will formulate a lot of what we know about the deer population in town. Okay, we won't, we won't be anecdotal. It'll actually be an actual study, a scientific study. It's been in process for a couple of years now. So, um, so hopefully we'll get some, some actual data that we can use to formulate um, um, information about the deer population. Um, I, I think that that's going to be important for us as we look at yeah. what wildlife habitat is, and whether or not we still have the, the, the problem or it's swung the other way. I, I don't know which way it is. Um, it doesn't mean that we should, without regard, disturb habitat without understanding what that might mean. Um, and so I, I don't think I don't think when we look at a land management plan, and this was part of my conversation, a little bit earlier was I'm trying to find the balance between recreational use and habitat, right? So which one, I don't think either one necessarily outweighs the other, but when we look at a land management plan, we can make those decisions. We can determine whether or not this is a, 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 an important piece of wildlife habitat, or we can talk about it as an important piece of recreational um, uh, property. It, or can we find the middle ground where, where they both coexist? And, that, and that's what I think that there's more than enough room on this property for us to do both. Um, and and I, I, I'm not against a, a management plan, but I think a, a single track trail of this size through that section of this property, that doesn't bother me at all. I think people conserve what they care about. And I think these trails are really important to our mission as a conservation people and getting people to buy into the other policies that I think are a little bit less palatable, like no pesticides on your lawn. I think the two are a little more related than then maybe, then maybe it is immediately apparent. Uh, and and I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to this trail. I, I'm, I'm simply saying I, I think that that you know land management plan, either for this or Wheaton Farm or any other property you know that we've got going on here that we should, we should potentially um, think about what that means, um, as opposed to. Um, hoping that what we're doing isn't offsetting some other problem and creating some other problem that that's you know from my own standpoint i i, I think I, agree. I think the work that's been done in this town by the volunteers um has been absolutely outstanding fantastic i'm so appreciative of it um uh the work that chris has, has done over the last 10 years and I, i've spent time with chris in the woods so i know how dedicated he is to not strictly just this is not just to him about recreation, it's about using the land in, in its least disruptive way. I, I, I believe that, um, and, and you know, I've experienced it with Chris, so I absolutely 100% believe it. Um, I, I don't believe that that anyone here has a, a single um, um, a goal in mind. It's simply, I, I think, I think the proposal here is to try and make sure that we, we're doing it in a balanced manner, and, and one that's least impactful. That, that's all. Um, Fair enough. Any other comments from the commission or Chris before I, I have, I see a couple of public members of the public that, that want to speak about this. So, okay. So uh, I will uh, recognize Kyla Bennett first. Hello, Kyla. Hello, thank you so much for recognizing me. Um, just, uh, just identify yourself for the record. Sure. Kyla Bennett, I'm here with my husband, Don. We're at Two Chickadee Lane. We are the ones who gave the easement or in the process of giving the easement to the town so that the public can access this property. Um, just a couple of comments. First of all, um, 
what Chris Patrick and the Eagle Scouts have done back here, I agree with Ben, they're an amazing trail system. It's just fabulous. Um, we've lived in this property since 2006. So we are very familiar with the property back there. We used to bushwhack back there before the trails were in. Um, and the nice thing about it is the connectivity between uh, the town forest and borderland. So in hunting season, we can take that first part of the trail um, and walk into borderland without driving, which is, which is fabulous. The trails are great. I wanted to mention a couple of things. First of all, um, we did have a wildlife management plan done for the entire town. It's a little old now, but I think it still might be relevant. I forgot, Jen, I forgot the name of the woman. It was Diane. Oh, I, I can come up with it, but Stephanie, prob Stephanie Danielson probably knows where it is. Right. Um, Diane Barretos, but yes, I thought that was only Wheaton Farm. Was it the whole town? She did the whole town. Yep, oh, she okay. did the whole town because I remember she found um, a uh, bobcat on the Gill property. Maybe she she was looking at a lot a lot of the um, conservation. Yeah, a lot of the conservation land. So that might be worth dusting off to see what's there. Um, but since Don and I do spend so much time back there, and I agree with Ben that the um, you know we see people. We go early in the morning, and so we we often run into Mike. Sometimes we run into some people down by the town pool area, by the Flyway Dam, some people from that end. Um, but it, it's not that busy. It does get busier on weekends. It does get busier, you know, lunchtime and dinner time in nice weather. But even in the winter, we see sometimes snowshoe tracks out there. It's mostly people walking, some snowshoeing, some mountain biking. Um, it's not overused. And it because it's a single track, and just so you know, um, both Don and I have PhDs in ecology and evolutionary biology. We're very familiar with the wildlife back there. And the winters have provided some great tracking opportunities. We have a very large fisher population back there. Um, we have some great forest interior birds back there as well, as Jen mentioned. Right. But the thing the is that the, 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 the thing is that the... Um, the single track trails are not going to bother those interior bird species because of the type of use that this trail gets. They're still going to be okay. In fact, we see animals using the trails, um, which is kind of funny. We see on the boardwalk, we see raccoon prints, um, skunk prints, possum prints, you know, so they're actually using the trails themselves, which is kind of fun. Um, and as Chris said, there are people in Stoughton who bushwhack through right now. They use the deer trails to get into the main trail. And it probably will be less damaging if we actually give them a trail that they can walk on so that they're not taking 10 different routes and creating trails throughout the property, which is allowed. But if we give them an actual trail to walk on, then they'll stay on the trail rather than bushwhacking. So I think it's actually um, would be less damaging to put in a trail and say, hey guys, use this trail, don't make 17 different ways in. Um, so anyway, we would be happy to help out with any kind of wildlife assessment if, if you wanna take our help on that. And the other thing is that because it is a single track trail um, and you know doesn't really, the, the forest canopy is still complete, intact, um, it's, it's not even as bad as the right of way through the Hockamock. What's more damaging actually is the sheep farm um, between the ammonia and the manure and all of the clear cutting that took place there. That's way more damaging than the trail itself. Um, but I am fully in support of this additional trail. I don't think it is going to harm wildlife at all. And it does, as several of you have pointed out, give the benefit of educating people, allowing people in Easton and also Sharon and Stoughton and people do come from other places to use these, this trail system. But I've taken, I've led kids out into the vernal pools back there. Um, we've had people out there teaching them about tracking and trees and vernal pool wildlife and all sorts of things. And it's, a, it's an incredible resource and having that extra trail there um, particularly if you want to say, okay, this is the last one. I think it's, I think it's a, a really good idea and we're happy to help in any way that we can. Great. So great. Thank you. I was going to ask you for your wildlife data. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep.
Um, so I'm going to recognize, uh, according to my list, I have Stefan Catino next up here. So. Hey, Rory, can you hear me? We can hear you, yep. All right, just a moment. I can uh, kind of turn on my camera here for resume on the phone. All right. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Um, thanks can, you just, for, uh, can you just identify yourself for the record? Yes, uh, Stefan Cautino, uh, 15 Vineyard Place, Northeastern Massachusetts. Um, you know, former uh, member of the Conservation Commission. So it's nice to see some uh, familiar faces and, uh, and some new faces. Always good to have uh, volunteers working for the town. Um, so I, I guess just a, a few points, you know, that I want to make. Um, you know, the, the, the open spaces in this town are, are pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, particularly that flyaway trail, the first time I, I rode through there, you know, my jaw was open and awe at the natural beauty back there. It's, it's a beautiful property. And, um, you know, letting the, the people of the town and the public uh, have access back there is, is uh, it, it's wonderful. It's a great trail. Um, and Chris and his team, um, you know, again, they've been recognized before, but you know, they just do some tremendous work, um, you know, for, for the town, for the public benefit here. Um, you know, I, I guess on the, the, the wildlife front, um, just looking back at my time on, on the commission, um, you know, we were always more concerned with protected species uh, from my memory than, you know, deer, turkey, you know, squirrels, bunnies, what have you. Um, not that they're not important, um, but it just seemed like there was, you know, a little bit of a, a priority for, for more protected, uh, more endangered, um, you know, species of, uh, of wildlife out there. Um, you know, whether or not that has any bearing here, you know, but I guess that'll be up to any potential land management, wildlife management plans uh, that come down the line. Uh, but I, I just wanted to put that perspective in there. And, and you know, again, uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, you know, if you zoom out, there's there's so much open space in the area and in the town um, that, you know, I think I'd agree with Kyle that I don't, I don't think it'll be too much of a, an impact there with the single track. Um, one comment on the uh, the potential doing some land management plans. Uh, Jen, in, in your experience in the past, like, has it made sense to maybe look at a series of properties that are maybe near each other when you're doing a land management plan? So each property isn't necessarily like on an island um, to, to go back to the, um, was it the Envision Easton plan that was looking at kind of connectivity between the properties? You do. Yeah, but you, you know, with time and resources, you start with one plan and then see how they all connect together. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess just keeping that in, in perspective too is you know how, how the the properties play against each other um, for the different pockets of open space and then connecting things. Um, but yeah, I, I I think the trail system back there is wonderful. Um, it'd be great to have uh, some additional you know single track exploring some more of the property, um, you know, some more of the natural features. It sounds like it's a you know entirely um, you know separate space in there. And you know if you if you walk through the flyaway trail starting from the, the town pool area, you almost start off in a little bit of a, a pine stand, then you move into more of an open forest and the high bush blueberry. So you, you kind of go through several different forest zones on that one trail, which is, uh, which is pretty neat. Great, thank you. And uh, that's all, thank you guys. Thanks, Stefan. Um, next up is, Someone named Richard, I think it's maybe Richard Higgins, but we'll let him introduce himself. So Richard, you've been promoted. You can turn on your audio and video and then introduce yourself would be great. Hi. Hi. 
Um, Richard Higgins, 11 Flyaway Pond Drive. Um, I've lived here for 26 years on Flyaway Pond. Uh, and it's only been about in the last three years that I've discovered uh, since, it, since the Flyaway Pond Trail was built, um, how incredible it is uh, for recreation, biking, cross-country skiing, hiking. Uh, I've taken my granddaughter out on the trail and it's just, it's, it's a, it's, as people have uh, said previous to me, it's, it's a, uh, it's a very special resource. Um, with regard to how much traffic I see on the trails, and I'm out there a lot, I see very little. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a detriment to wildlife in in any regard that that I can see. And I'm I'm an amateur. I'll let uh, wildlife experts uh, who know a lot more than me uh, speak to that. But I don't see any. And uh, this proposed trail. I think would be a, a tremendous uh, recreational benefit to the town. Um, and if you want to talk about connectivity, uh, the fact that you can go from all the way from Borderland to Main Street, if you connect um, the NRT conservation restricted property is really something. It's a jewel for this town. And I, I for one, that's, that's, that's the extent of my comment. I, I'm, 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 ex I'm, I'm support this proposal. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, comments, Richard. Okay, so um, any other public comment from uh, on this topic? I got Jonathan Chase. Okay, there you are, Jonathan. You did it all yourself this time. I know, I know. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, I would uh, volunteer my time uh, for any uh, wildlife's work that takes place prior to this uh, trail development and, uh, and for trail development. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, the, the work that uh, you and Chris uh, have put in over the years is outstanding um, and is uh, um, very well respected and, um, and uh, um, it, it means a lot to to not just uh, the commission, but the town. And you've heard tonight from from you know members of the public that have no connection to the conservation commission, um, and, and what it means to them uh, to have access to not just Flyway Pond, but you know, um, you know Clifford Grant and all the other work that's been done in Town Forest and uh, and the ongoing work that uh, that gets done to even maintain these trails. And we haven't even touched on that tonight, and the amount of work that gets done on, on maintaining these trails. Um, especially with the uh, more and more wind damage that happens with trees coming down. So, um, you know, it's um, it, it's out, outstanding, amazing, amazing work. And uh, we are uh, obviously um, uh, absolutely uh, lucky to have uh, the kind of volunteers in this town um, and not just the people that are, you know, serving on the commission itself, but everyone else who gets involved. So um, I do appreciate it. And uh, don't take anything I say as a, uh, uh, in, in a constructive manner as any um, um, negative uh, connotation towards the work that's been done. It's been incredible, absolutely incredible. And as I said, I've been out in the field with both Chris and Jonathan and Stefan. So um, I, I know this isn't just to, you know, show up at a meeting and say a couple words, you know, they're out there doing the work. So I, I do appreciate that. So thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, so what do we want to do here tonight? So we can, we can talk about, um, doing some wildlife assessments and 
trying to put together a, a land management plan um, um, to see where this um, um, this trail fits in. We can forego that and go straight to a trail. My my own thought process is that. Um, I'd like to have some, I'd like to have some assessment that that we're not disturbing other aspects of the environment um, um, do this and I, I don't know how to do that in a quick and dirty way or at least at the very minimum have some sort of assessment done to, to do so so um, but I, I, I will open myself up to you know further discussion I, I'm one person as I said I don't want to be the only voice in the room is there any way that uh, we could do a study and get that done by the end of July and come before the board at the end of July or early August? So that way it would be a potentially better time to put in the trail than, than currently with the deer population, as Mike pointed out. I, I'd, I'd love for that to happen. I think that's an incredibly short period of time, but, um, but I, you know, I'm not the expert in that manner, so. Jennifer, is that possible? Sounds like you got some, you know, biology folks that could help you out with that. Uh, we can certainly aim for that, yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if that could be done, that, that would be the absolute best opportunity even if we only come together in july and say listen we only got through half of it yeah. and this is what we found and we can make some sort of an assessment and get and keep uh you know keep chris on a, a timeline that makes sense with with this if it's going to get done this year so um you know from, from my perspective if that could possibly be done that's the best of both worlds to me i agree and, Can, i mean candidly my and I, and I agree completely but my problem is I can't imagine what's going to be on a survey like that that would ever have me say, let's not build this trail. I mean, unless we have a specific I'm, portion of it that's, that's a real problem. The thing, I've never said I want the trail built. The beginning of this trail is in four major deer bedding areas. And apparently that apparently doesn't mean anything to me, but what it means is these deer habitually sleep there. This is their home and their comfort place. They could have babies there. They may, this might be a, a, a direct food source. It's a, it's a part of their habitual routine that matters to them. Just like you get up in the morning and do your routine. Yep. So that is a very important. And that should be, the beginning of that trail should be placed in a strategic place. It's also abutting that stream that mallards have been going in recently and using. That's important stuff. We don't want to ride through that, walk through that on a maybe intermittent time and disturb it. We want to put this in the right beginning so I, th I think one of the comments that, that i'll read into the record here from stefan is it, is it possible to prioritize that that area and work out from there you know if, if that's the most impactful area that we're talking about um would and it's not even a huge deal it's just rerouting not walking didn't, didn't we already do that i mean chris didn't didn't we open with we moved the the front of these trails away from the deer bedding yes yeah we could yeah Absolutely do that. It's a very small area, actually, of the whole entire loop. Exactly. So, I mean, certainly, um, so here, here's, maybe maybe this is the proposal, okay? And, and I know Kyla has a further comment here um, as well, um, is um, perhaps the, the proposal here is to, um, get out and do as much as possible in the next eight weeks um, and come back together here mid-July or whatever our next, that meeting is in that time period and talk about it at that point. We'll have better data. We'll have, you know, our, our, we won't, um, we'll, we'll have better, more informed data than, than um, some of this other stuff. So I, I think that the more information that we can gather, it'll make us able to make that decision. And we can decide at that point whether we move forward or we see enough to say, oh, we do need to do a bigger you know, study and, and be more uh, uh, judicious about this. I think at that point, we'll know a little bit more and be able to, to, to make 
a, a better choice, a choice. Um, at that point. So, I mean, that's just, that's all I'm thinking about here. Yeah, that's fair. Wouldn't it be uh, worthwhile having Mike as an advisor on that group, if you will, because he knows the bedding habitat yeah. probably better than any of us out there. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, th I think there's, to listen to him. Yeah, Matt, I think that there's, a, I think there's probably a bunch of people here, you know, uh, Kyle and Don seem pretty uh, uh, well suited for uh, that type of, of work as well, um, the Bennett's. So um, I, I think that my goal here maybe is to involve, you know, just not, I, I can't have Jen go out this, there and do this by herself. I mean, we need other people to get out there and mm -hmm. um, be part of this um, team. Um, and so we are gonna need uh, other volunteers to be, be part of this. And um, you know, whether that be Ben and Mike, or, you know, and obviously Chris will, will wanna be involved. And, and I, I heard Kyla and Don, you know, offer their expertise. Um, so maybe we can coordinate. Nobody has to be out there every single one, but, but maybe we can get out there a couple of times, three times in the next couple of months so that we can spend some time and, and, and figure out what's out there that we need to be um, careful about. That I'm laughing because I'm sure Jen would love to clear her next month of paperwork and go hang out back there. There's no question about that. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer's arm to, to There's go out to the woods. no question about that at all. No, I'm thinking about all the next filings that are coming up for June 6th. Sounds better than my day job, also. But yes, I would much <laughs> rather be outside. So, I, 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 Kyla has another comment here, and, I, and hopefully, uh, we can um, maybe make a decision here and, and move forward. So, but Kyla is being promoted. So, thanks, Rory. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, I do agree with Mike that we absolutely should avoid the bedding areas. I think, and I do think that he knows those better than anybody. And we see them out there every day anyway. So Mike, maybe we should all go out and um, and and flag those and make sure that we know where they are. But yeah. I wanted to say- I have, I have a photograph too anyway. So okay. whatever you guys need, so. Great. And uh, I just wanted to say, Rory, that Don and I have a running list of the birds, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals that we've seen out there. Um, so we're happy to provide that to anybody, and we keep adding to it as as we hear and see new species. So we can provide that to you. And so I think between, um, you know, Mike's knowledge of the property and all the deer out there, and the um, also the um, waterfowl and our birding, reptile, amphibian, and other non-hunted species. I think that we'll have a really good start. I don't know if it's possible to get something done by July, but I think we, I think we can get a, a good way into it. I, I think I, I don't think I, I don't I have no expectation of having it done by July. Yeah. I just have I, I'd like to know what we can know by July. So I, I think that's maybe the most prudent approach at this point, um, and um, and then we get to a more comfortable answer that we can all agree upon. I mean, I think that's probably the best approach here. And if, if we have to move the, the entrance, you know, 50 yards one way or the other, then we, we have to do that. And we have to it's just with that. simply rerouting. It's all it is. I, I'm sure it is. And I'm sure Chris mm -hmm. would say, yeah, of course, let's move it over there. You know, so, you know, I, I think that uh, it's all reasonable stuff. And I think with, you know, Kyle and Don and, 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 and Jennifer and, and you and Chris and Ben jumping in, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get this. Uh, We'll get this to a point where end of July we'll have more information um, and have at least um, some better sense of, of what we're doing out there. That's all. Okay. Um, any, anything else? Sorry, I'm managing. Uh, I didn't have anything else. Um, I, I was prepared to have a conversation about management land management in the guise of like like volunteers taking care of trails but yeah i, I misinterpreted what land management went so we've had a good oh. com healthy conversation to reframe it and so that's good so i, I actually I, would like to dig up that old that old land management plan that that was written that kyla mentioned because I, I kind of somewhat remember it yeah, and, and to be honest, I do think that, and it's something that we've talked about, and I think we do have to talk about trail maintenance in, in, in that perspective, that management perspective of it, um, because uh, um, you carry the, the, the burden on that uh, quite, uh, 
quite a bit. So if not a hundred percent, so, um, so I, you know, I think that we, take the we, village, <laughs> lots of people help. <laughs> so, okay. So, so I think that what we'll do here is Jennifer, if you just coordinate with, you know, Kyle and Don and, and Mike and Chris and Ben and whoever else you can sort of get out there a couple days and, and see what we can see. Um, and if I'm around, I'm happy to go out and see what I can see as well. So, okay. Yep. I, I think between the four or five people, we'll have a running list of just about everything that's back there. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay. Chris, anything else? No, thank you for uh, having me this evening. Well, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, all the work you put into this, really. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so let's move on to uh, Tufts Farm. Um, so uh, in our last meeting, we um, voted not to award the bids for Tufts Farm to either one of the two uh, people that um, submitted bids. Um, we currently have a tenant I think the intention is to provide notice to the tenant to vacate the property. We have to provide a notice to quit to the tenant. And I think what, um, first I, I wanna have us agree that that's what we wanna do, number one. And number two, we, I wanna talk about what the time frame of that is. We have to give a minimum of 30 days notice. So if we gave 30 days notice now, it would be by the end of June. You have to, each period, you can't just say 30 days from May 23rd, it's 30 days from when the period starts. So, um, so that'd be June 1. So, um, so um, number one, let's have a discussion about, do we want to provide a, a notice to quit to the, to the tenant and have the tenant and have them vacate the property? Um, just, a, and, just a thought, but in this housing market, wouldn't it be, more prudent to try to give them 60 days if we could fit it into both schedules so let, let's let's handle let's handle let's handle it one at a time here and then and then we'll get to the time frame here so so are we in agreement that we want to give we want to ask that the, the current tenants and vacate absolutely yes yes I see mike nodding so yeah um so I agree that we should we should ask the tenant to vacate. So the, then the question comes into to Al's question is whether or not we believe 30 days is adequate notice, whether we believe that 60 days is more um, reasonable. He's got farm animals, not just moving himself. So we got to think of all that stuff. He's got farm equipment that is personally his. He's got to move it. He's got to get ways to get that out. He's old. I. I do not disagree with an extension of time. I just, it's hard for me not to put my day job hat on. And I think a 30 day notice to quit is a very specifically defined thing. And if we're going to do a 30 day notice to quit, we have to make it a 30 day notice to quit. If, so I think it is a different conversation if we want to say, here's a 90 day, we expect you to move out letter. And then on day 60, we send a 30 day notice letter. Um, and also, evictions do not happen in 30 days if it's going to go that route anyway he can kind of sit there as long as he wants kind of right more or less yeah so it doesn't even i got you so just get the ball moving that's fair because that's how it's going to go so so i think that from my standpoint i'd prefer to give the 30 days notice to quit and get the okay. issue mm -hmm. rolling and then let's see what happens at, at 30 days but you know, if we if we don't give them thirty days, I don't think that there will be that impetus to get moving. Yes, money. And do we? I don't know if I can. Admit it. Do we have? Is town council involved in serving the notice and and all that? Because there's now a whole bunch of requirements because of COVID. Things have you have to file affidavits with the notice to quit that you've complied with HUD procedures and all kinds of different things. So, so um, he gave me a draft notice to quit and said it should be hand delivered with a witness, but he didn't say anything about affidavits. Okay, it's not it's not my typical. It, if if this person has done evictions, let them let them do. It's not my day job. I just know there were a lot of people in my bar association freaking out about COVID protocols, implementing new things that were required to officially serve notices to quit. So, and if you don't comply, it sets you back thirty days upon the expiration of the thirty days. So 
just just trying to be helpful. That's all. Okay. So that goes to sort of ask the question, Jennifer, do we think we can serve the notice to quit in the next week? I mean, it's it's really just a two page document um, just with your signatures. And he didn't tell me if we needed ink signatures or if um, electronic would be okay. Is, is there anything we can do to help him move out? I mean, is, has he indicated an interest in leaving? I don't think we've um, heard. About a month or two ago, he did tell the oil company to stop automatic delivery that he was moving, but I haven't heard anything since then. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. There is okay. not, again, not to your point, I agree with what you're saying because of what I think, you know, is coming our way. There's no rush. The goats will be there. <laughs> okay, so so um, I make a motion to issue a, a notice to quit, 30-day notice uh, for uh, Tufts Farm property. Carol, second. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Carol, aye. Benson, aye. Hey, aye. Okay, um, so under uh, violations under bylaws and regulations. So in the packet today, Jennifer supplied the sections of the regulations uh, related to um, um, related to uh, violations and enforcement. So both the bylaw and the regulations uh, there, you can see what our authority is. You know, we're allowed to issue a $300 a day fine. Uh, we're allowed to forgive those fines under certain circumstances. I think they refer to them as abate them. But um, so uh, so we have a lot of tools in, in our, our toolbox here. Um, they're also required to file a notice of intent if it's required within 30 days. Um, there's all sorts of things that, that, that we've talked about here. Um, you know, I think that part of it is, so does anybody have any, I don't know if anybody had a chance to read that it was way, way down in the end of the packet, about, starting about page 40. So, um, but anybody have questions, concerns, want to know where we go from here, want to change our approach to this? I mean, I think part of it, part of the concern and in, in, is it, you know, um, you know, whether there's an increase in frequency of these, whether there's an increase in seriousness of them, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's strictly an education thing with, with the town residents um, or whether it's um, strictly just a, a, a blip in, in what's going on out there. So, One question, um, when, is there any differential between taking down, let's say 20, 30 inch diameter trees and um, and we get a three foot high seedling in there and to replace it. Is there any way that if you take down a, a 20 or above inch tree, you have to replace it with a, you know, significantly larger tree? It just, the imbalance seems really noticeable. So Jennifer, what's the, the survival rate is a lot lower when you get that big of a tree. That you're trying to can we keep a bond theoretically i mean not saying that we would under just hypothetical circumstance <laughs> keep a bond for 40 years while the tree grows back yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i i i guess i i would be very much interested in trying to look at some larger trees um as replacements versus if you take down small seedlings, they could be replaced and not at loss with seedlings. But if you take down, you know, major trees, um, I just don't think there's a balance with putting something that's three feet high. And as Matt pointed out, you get it back in 50 years. Yeah. So, 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 so maybe maybe if, if we have another violation where this issue comes up, that, that maybe Jennifer, you can give us some back background on what
what the survival rate is on a you know six foot tree versus a you know a, a four foot tree versus a ten foot tree or something you know so I mean I think that it would help us make that decision about what a five year survival rate is on those trees I mean I, I think as you say it's you know especially with the the, the quite a, quite a range in in a climate uh, um, experience for these these trees you know, they they go from drought to 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 oversaturation I mean it's, it's all in the same season so um, so it's a bit of a challenge I mean they're under a lot of stress for sure so maybe, maybe next time that's something that you can help with help us with. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we've certainly on a, uh, you know, we're asking it for a performance bond on the, the, the one that's happening um, now in Summer Street. Um, that's certainly a, it helps us ensure that the applicant is doing the work that, you know, um, it, it, is, it is doing the work that's been agreed upon. It certainly doesn't, to Al's point or Ben's point, you know, resolve the whole problem. Right? I mean, they, they destroyed you know resources that just can't be replaced um so which is also why there's no practical way to replace them there was one other thing that was mentioned the um there's different types of bonds and one you only cost your pennies on the dollar to put it up the other is a cash bond and if it's a very severe um infraction of the regulations, I think I'd be in favor of a cash bond versus a pennies on the dollar um, type of support. It's usually equity or cash, right? That's right. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, that's, that's something we can definitely look at next time. So I'm just making a note of it. Do you want me to look at that? Uh, I can touch base with some, you know, with, uh, yeah, you, if you could, people yeah, and, if you and also with the banks and we'll figure out what options, you know, I, I might be able to identify some others that, you know, could be reviewed. Yeah. By yeah, if, if you give us a little bit of a summary of, go ahead, Jennifer. Uh, just that the, the bonds go to the town treasurer. Right. Yeah. Okay. I would I would love to know because and I this is just off cuff. I always thought that we didn't get to choose whether they it was an equity or cash. I thought the option was, and I could be completely wrong. I just thought it was a statutory thing where you could either post a bond by cash or equity. Uh, my only experience is with cash bonds. Okay. Because um, early on in Norton, um, some people would put up money in a bonding company, but mm -hmm. somehow they got their bonds back before we got the you know, wetland permits finished. So we went, nope, we're going with cash. <laughs> so that's my only experience with bonding. That's a funny way. That would be a very funny way to post a bond with like a bonding. If you don't anyway. mind, I'll touch base with the treasurer and, and uh, see what the current regulations are and how they're being handled now. So just a quick report back to the commission on that. Why don't you just, why don't you just uh, work with Jennifer a little bit? and make sure we we're all on the same page before we reach out to the town clerk or anything on this one or the town treasurer yeah all right anything else just al i'm happy to do some legal research if needed yep Just let me know <laughs> okay thank you um meeting minutes um Okay, so 11.25, I mean 11, 11.25, wow, 4.25, um, uh, the regular session minutes, there's just four places where people's initials are, if we could just replace them with um, their names. Under 12 Harlow Street, there's three occurrences. Um, and under two Washington Street certificate of compliance, there's one. Any other comments on April 25th? Not for me. Um, on the executive session on 425, we have two decisions to make here. One is to um, 
accept the minutes and then also to determine whether we release them or not. So once you, you only release executive session minutes once, what's this? Jennifer's shaking her head at me. Yeah, only if the issue is totally resolved, you release. I understand. It's our, it's our decision to make. <laughs> so, um, so, so let's just talk about the, the minutes first. Anybody have any comments on the minutes? Okay, so I think this issue is still open. So we should hold these minutes. So uh, we'll make it. So I'm going to I'm going to do the regular minutes together, and then we'll come back to this one. We'll make a, a motion to accept the minutes, but continue to hold them until the issue is resolved. Okay. Great. And on May 9th, um, the start time is should be 6:30:35, and in the roll call attendance, Crossman is listed twice. One of those should be Carol. And in the, on page two at the bottom in the motion to continue, um, this was a Quisa comment, comments permit extension. It says for further information to determine if COVID tolling schedule, it says trolling. So we just want to fix that malapropism. So. Uh, so, uh, other than that, I didn't have any other. Um, so, uh, make a motion to accept uh, April 25th and May 9th with the minor changes uh, um, as discussed. Hey, a second. A roll call vote. Call fells aye. Benson aye. Carol aye. Andy aye. Okay, so on the executive session meeting minutes, I make a motion to accept the minutes, but continue to hold them. Spade, you say. Uh, roll call vote, call calls aye. Carol, I, I'm sorry, Al. I keep doing it, force a habit. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> Carol, I. Vincent, I. Spade, I. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, did Mr. Speedy second that motion to accept and not release? He did. Call Phil Speedy a second. Then I put it in the blender. <laughs> <laughs> then you put it in the blender. Um, chair report, I uh, have uh, nothing to report other than to thank Jennifer very much for going to town meeting on her vacation. I do appreciate it, especially since I, since I was laid up and unable to attend. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Environmental planner updates. I end up I ended up with two. Um, Nine Hobart. We never ended up getting their signed or stamped plans. So just letting you know, we will issue the permit, but we I have to change one of the conditions that says you have to give us the signed and stamped mm -hmm. plans before we approve before they start any work. Did so we be aware hear, of that? Did we ever hear from the NRT on their uh, assessment of the proposed by or the violations that were noted by uh, the lawyer? Nope. Maroney? So, um, so they're they're they have to wait till their June meeting in order to then we'll hear from them. Although we don't have to hear from them. So, but well, the permit does require written authorization from NRT before they start work as one of the conditions. So eventually we will hear. Eventually we will hear. <laughs> eventually. Um, the other item is we did get a, re a call request from the person at lot one, Barron Estates, who's on the left-hand side, right on the corner where the upland restoration area is. Uh, he wanted to put a stockade fence around the whole property, which would have included all the upland restoration area. My response was, I did not think that would be approved, um, but I said I would bring it to your attention and see what you thought of that. My, uh, my thought is that um, part of the restoration areas for wildlife habitat, if it's a stockade fence around it, it nothing can get there. So. so he wants to put it around his entire backyard property, his front yard? So it's that whole side yard that comes along the street uh, where the he wants to enclose the upland restoration area. Oh, 
think we'll just leave it as is. We've had enough pro problems with this piece of property. So, anybody else? Leave it. Agree. Okay. That was it for me. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Jennifer. We whizzed through the first half of this meeting. <laughs> That's all right. We had great discussion, and I do appreciate everyone's input and Good comments. And uh, and I do appreciate uh, um, all the the hard work that everyone's uh, putting in um, on the commission, as well as the associate members. And uh, I'm taking the time out of their day to get here. Um, and yep, um, like Mike said, it's not saying no. There shouldn't be a trail. It's just let's make sure it's in the right place and done at the right time, and if it's sure. necessary, and the right mileage and um there's a lot of there's a lot more to land management than just um moving people from place to place there's other things to look at well, as i said I, I just want more information that's all i'm not i i haven't said no to anything and i, I haven't heard anybody else say it either it's a matter of just let's let's make sure we're doing the right thing at this point that's all and that that is no that's no um evaluation of what we've done so far we've done great things that you you've heard what the, all the positives that have come out of this piece of property and, and development, the trail development has been gone on. It's, you know, it's great. Fantastic. Yeah. Can't wait to right. get out. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. There you go. Nice. Uh, call fells with Benson for the second. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. Benson aye. Carol aye. There you are. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.